So one of the things that I've enjoyed uh, doing, I hope you have as well, is hearing from some of our superintendents uh, out there who are uh, doing something that superintendents have not had to do for 100 years, and, and that is deal with, with a real pandemic. Um, and I think they're doing a very, very good job. Uh, first up is Justin Jennings, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Youngstown City School District. Uh, Jennings, you on there? Yes, yes, sir. Well, thank you for joining us. We, 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 we appreciate it uh, very, very much. I see a couple of football helmets back there. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it is football season. Uh, tell us, tell us how you're approaching uh, what's going on in Youngstown schools. Are are you all remote? Are you in person? What are you? Yeah, we, we decided to go remote about three months ago. So we are we are working through the remote system. We have all of our devices, and and we've started. And we've also allowed. Uh, we have allowance for all of our scholars to have a hotspot or to have hardware wired um, internet access. So that's very, I think that's very, very important. Uh, you, you told me when we were talking the other day that you all made that decision early. Uh, then you started, I mean, one of, the, one of the challenges we always have, and certainly we had in the spring, uh, was students in rural areas, but sometimes also in urban areas, might not have um, uh, the connections. Uh, they might not be able to, uh, you know, have a laptop or some way to pull that down. So you're You've taken care of basically 100% of your students out there, you think, uh, who now has have the ability to, to connect in? Yes, yep. If, if, they, um, if they have hotspots, we try to provide one for each scholar at the house because we know sometimes if you have four or five people on the internet at the same time, it doesn't run as fast. And if they didn't have anything, we, we provided a home from Spectrum, we provided a home internet access for them, so. Tell me a little bit um, about, uh, how your teachers are doing and, and you know, how, how this learning uh, is, is going. Well, because, because we started so, so early, we, it afforded us the opportunity to train our teachers in the summer. So it's still a learning curve. Zoom is new for everybody. I mean, I don't think any, anybody who said you wanted to be an educator early, I don't think they had a class on remote learning. So <laughs> this is something that's, that's kind of a learning curve for all of us. And, and the teachers have been very positive, more for their health and safety it has been something that's been really positive. We're still allowing our teachers to work from home or they have the choice with social distancing to work from their classroom. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, wellness dollars. Uh, one of the things that uh, the legislature provided and, and you know, we came up with this proposal sent to the legislature, they embraced it, uh, was the wellness dollars and uh, you and I were talking the other day a little bit about that. Uh, you want to tell us how what you've done with those, and because I, I thought that was kind of it was unique what you're doing, really. Right. Absolutely. I mean, we know we know that health and wellness has really something that's positive that comes out from this COVID virus is really looking at the disparities in, in our healthcare system. And one of those things for Youngstown City Schools is we don't have any pediatricians within our city limits to service our scholars. So what we decided to do with our wellness dollars is we, we've teamed up with Quick Meds and, and Dr. Ishmael, and we, we're going to have a clinic in each of our, of our high schools that is going to be open from 10 to 6 every, every day during the week and on Saturdays as well to service our scholars and our community as well. And, and as of yesterday, after our press release come, came out, we also have, uh, we're also going to have vision there as well. So Dr. Siegel from uh, um, site for all will be be there as well and that's the opportunity for us to do this and our plan in the future is to be able to expand and have a clinic at each school to service not only our scholars and teachers but our community as well well wow, that's a that has to be have a huge impact uh, when that's all online uh, huge impact not only with the students but with their families and the people other people in the community absolutely absolutely we we have a, a, a large uh, percentage of our scholars who have family members who have been incarcerated. So when they come out, they don't have the opportunity for that health care as well. So we're going to provide it for them as well. Well, I think that's really, that's really exciting. What, what's the timeline on that? How soon does that kick in? We'll be, we'll be open and ready for business in late October, early November. So we're just getting the space together and then we'll be good to go. Maybe a little earlier than that. So with the students remotely though, you'll still, you're still going to open this up for students to come in and for community members. 
yes, by, by appointment, we will we'll be prepared. We'll follow all those guidelines that we, we have normally with the social distancing, with, with temperatures and different things like that. So we've actually been using QuickMed to do our testing for all of our scholar athletes, our COVID testing. So that's kind of how we started the relationship. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. I, I, I was really excited about that when I, you and I talked the other day, and I wanted you to share it with, uh, with everybody in the state. So uh, thank you very much. Good thank luck. You. Thank Good you. Good luck so to your friend. students and your teachers. We thank, thank them for all they're doing.